Now, I've been reviewing a lot of e-readers lately, and I've got to say, one of my favorites so far has been the Kobo Forma. This is the high-end Kobo, and it costs $249, and it has that high premium price point for a very good reason. In this video, we're doing a deep dive review of the Kobo Forma. Hi there, Rai Grinji Ga Khalsa, Rai Grinji Ki Fateh. My name is Manit Bal Singh. On this channel, we talk about tech and getting things done. The Kobo Forma is an amazing e-reader for reading more books and getting more things done while you read. Now, as I mentioned, the Forma starts at 249 for the eight gigabyte model. If you want 32 gigabytes though, that will cost you an extra 50 bucks, so $300 for the highest end Kobo Forma. One thing that I find really interesting though is the Forma does not support Bluetooth. So for audiobooks, you can't really use this for that purpose. The extra storage you're getting is really meant for holding more books or more other PDFs or any other EPUBs, whatever you're using. The Kobo ecosystem is great at supporting basically any file format that you could think of for reading. Now, as of right now, there's no option for color. The only one you get is this black model over here and the black is really nice the other options for the Libra had black or white so that is one downgrade in terms of color options you only have the one now there are several things that make this the most premium Kobo and why it's so expensive to buy and the first thing is the build quality the back of the Kobo is a hundred percent rubber back and I really love this material for durability. What I don't like are these little holes. All the Kobos have this pattern texture. A lot of dust and crumbs can get stuck in this. It's really nice to hold. It feels really comfortable and really solid, but the rubber does get fingerprints and it gets dirty really quickly. Putting that aside though, one thing on the Forma that you won't find on the other Kobos is the rubberized front where the page turn buttons are. This makes it so much nicer to hold you have that extra durability and that extra premium feeling quality all around the device where your hand will be. This is quite a big distinction for most other e-readers that have plastic all over the front. This device is rubber. It makes holding it so, so nice. And one thing I realized is it's a premium device that doesn't really feel like you need to buy a case for it. I feel really comfortable holding this thing without worrying about dropping it and it breaking or anything like that. It just feels like a solid device. Now, the other thing that you're paying for with this premium price tag is the eight inch display versus the seven inch display on the model below this. This is actually the largest e-ink display that I personally use. The Kindle Oasis is also only a seven inch display. This is a full inch larger than that. This is kind of a big deal because most e-readers seven inch is really large, but for this one, eight inches, it takes it to a whole different level. You get so much more screen real estate. It almost felt like it was too large of a display when reading it for the first time. But I've got to say, it is a pleasure to use. It just feels different because it's an e-ink display. It's not the same as an iPad. You're having a larger screen with an e-ink technology. It does feel really, really nice. Now the display is also a 300 PPI resolution. Nothing too special over here. All the other major e-readers are also the same resolution, but no complaints either. This is a really nice resolution screen. It looks very crisp. I don't have any issues reading on this thing. And put Putting the large screen and the durable rubber design combined, you also get a waterproof Kobo. I've never had to use the waterproof feature of this device or any other e-reader for that matter, but if you do read in the pool or on the beach, this may be a useful feature for you. Now the other thing on the front side of this device are the page turn buttons. And on the Kobo Libra, I absolutely hated the page turn buttons on that. And I was really, really worried about these because the Kobo ecosystem only has two devices with page turn buttons, the Libra and the Forma. And on the Forma, the page turn buttons are quite a bit better than the Libra H2O. Because the device is so much larger than the Kindle Oasis, the page turn buttons are also much larger. One thing I do not like about these page turn buttons is there's quite a bit of a gap between the two buttons. My entire thumb can fit between the two buttons with some extra room still on top of that. So you do have to reach just a little bit to press the buttons. But the one thing about these these buttons that make it really, really nice is you can press them on either end, the front or the bottom of it, at the top of it, the middle of it, it doesn't matter where you press the button. 
On the Libra H2O, you have to press the button in a very, very specific place. On this device, it's just like the Oasis. You can press the button anywhere you want and it will click and register your page turn. The buttons feel really nice. It's really clicky material. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Again, this is a high-end Kobo and they did not cheap out with the buttons on the page turns over here. I'm really, really appreciative towards that. Speaking of buttons though, the one button that really, really got me and I was actually confused. I was wondering if I was doing something wrong, but it's just really bad. The power button on this thing just is not good at all. I don't know what it is. If you've watched my other videos, every e-reader I've reviewed has an issue with the power button, whether it's the location of it, the clickiness of it. In this one, it's both the location and the clickiness of it. It's on the side of the device, basically right in the middle of the page turn buttons. And when you press it, it doesn't really press. It's like a rubberized resistance. You have to push really, really hard for this thing to work. And I don't know why they didn't realize this when they shipped it. It's just, it's not a good button at all. When you press a power button, you expect it to work the first time you press it. I've never had to press a button so many times to get it to work. And the Forma button is just, it's the worst power button that I've ever used. Putting it at that, do not be, surprise when your button doesn't work the first time you press it on the Forma. Putting the clickiness and the functionality aside, the placement of the button's also in a really weird place on the side of the device. At least it's on the side where your hand will already be. And I guess they added the resistance because your hand could accidentally press it if you're holding it in a tight way or something like that. But it just doesn't work. I really wish they put it on the top or the bottom and they just left it to be a very clicky button like any other button would be. It's my biggest complaint about this device. Now the Forma also has a micro USB charger on the side, just like the Libra H2O, the Clara, basically every e-reader out there right now is using micro USB. I really hope that changes. The one thing about the Forma though that I found really nice that I haven't actually seen anywhere else yet is they included a very nice high quality micro USB cable in the box. This cable is a braided cable so it's very high quality, it doesn't feel cheap. And I actually really appreciate that they included a different type of cable with the highest Kobo that they sell. It's a very small touch and I really respect Kobo for doing that. Now just like all the other devices, this is a one gigahertz processor with 512 megabytes of RAM. It works really well. I don't really call these devices slow by any means. All of the Kobos have very nicely optimized software for their hardware and this is no exception to that. I do wish though that because this is the highest end Kobo, they would have put in a better processor. The Kindle Oasis has a dual core processor and that makes a noticeable difference in terms of the snappiness. The Kobo isn't slow, don't get me wrong, but it would have been nice if that extra money that you're paying for would have gone into the device's hardware as well. Now I have a whole video dedicated to the Kindle and Kobo ecosystem, all the differences you'll find there. On this device, it's exactly the same as all the other Kobos. You aren't really paying for anything special in the software except for one noticeable thing and that that's Dropbox support. Now I am a Dropbox user and I do intend to try this feature out, but I don't know why it's such a special thing that's unique to the Forma. It really isn't the biggest deal in the world. All it is is when you go on your Dropbox, you can create a special folder and drop files into it that will automatically upload to your Kobo. I guess this might be handy if you're really reading a lot of documents that require dragging and dropping files on your desktop. Dropbox is really well integrated to your computer, so it would make sending things to your Kobo that much easier, but on Kindle and also on the Kobo, it's not that hard to send over PDFs through email or extension or any other means for that matter. This is just a really extra feature that they added in. It does work really well though if you are a Dropbox user like myself, so I do look forward to using that for all my PDF needs. Now one other small detail that I realized on my Forma that I was not seeing on my Libra or any other e-reader for that matter is the actually really improved auto rotation feature that they had built into the device. Normally when you have an e-reader and you try changing the rotation, it'll only change rotation if you're locked into portrait mode or landscape mode. It won't automatically switch between the two. This is usually a pretty good thing, otherwise you'll be rotating all the time. But on the Forma, they actually let you rotate 
automatically between these two formats. So if you're in portrait mode, you can hold the device sideways and it'll automatically switch to landscape mode. And you could actually turn this on as a lock as well if you don't want that to be automatically switching between the two. This is a very small detail, but if you like to rotate your Kindle or your Kobo a lot, this is a really good feature for that. Normally you have to go into the settings and unlock this ability so you can switch between portrait and landscape. And the format over here, it's done automatically for you. Now it's cool that the format has this rotation feature, but they didn't include an ambient light sensor for some reason. So if they can include a rotation sensor, I really wish they could have included the ambient light sensor as well. If you wanna adjust the brightness on this thing, you have to do it manually. You can either do it by dragging on the left side of the screen up or down, or you go in the settings and adjust it over there. On my Kindle Oasis, it has the automatic light adjustment. This is the highest end Kobo. I really wish they also included that one small feature. It would have made a big difference for quality of life. Putting that aside though, it still has the warm light adjustment, just like all the other Kobos. That's a standard feature. It's really, really nice to be able to adjust the warm temperature at night before going to bed. The rest of the software of the Kobo is very, very standard. I love all the features the Kobo ecosystem has. It has all the built-in reading metrics right on the device. All the settings are very cleanly laid out. It's very easy to find things. I just love the overall minimalist experience of using the Kobo. Then to recap a little bit over here, what you're paying for at this premium 249 price point are essentially just a few things. You're paying for an eight inch display, which is the largest screen you're gonna find on the Kobo ecosystem and the Kindle ecosystem for that matter. And on top of that, you're also paying for this premium design of having that rubberized back in the front and the back, which is really, really nice. It just makes holding this device so much nicer. You're also paying for these really high quality page turn buttons compared to the Libra, which just suck. On the Forma, they do a much better job with these page turn buttons. You're also paying for a nice micro USB cable, which is a very small thing, but you are paying for that nice quality there. And then lastly, you're also paying for Dropbox integration, which is not standard on any other Kobo, only on the Forma. Now, if you ask me if I would buy this device, I would have to say no still, simply because the Kobo ecosystem does not support Readwise, and I use Readwise to sync all my highlights over to my computer, into my email, into my Notion. That's a really important factor for me. And also the Kobo bookstore has been missing some books for me. That isn't as well integrated as the Amazon bookstore in America at the very least. Those two things prevent me from buying a Kobo as my primary device. But putting those two things aside, this is an excellent device. I think it actually outperforms the Oasis in terms of the bang for the buck you're getting and function Speaking of the Oasis, if you enjoyed this video, I definitely recommend checking out my review of the Kindle Oasis. Link on the screen for that right now. These are direct competitors, and if you're in the market for a high-end e-reader, you definitely want to educate yourself on both of these devices. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.